What's are some hard to swallow pills about relationships? Putting off ending things for fear of hurting someone's feelings is the worst possible idea. If the relationship isn't right and you know you don't want to be together then sparing someone's feelings in the short term only leads to more pain later down the line. Be honest and front the horrible conversation. This is something I'm struggling with right now. They are a great person and I don't want to hurt them, but I think my feelings have changed. It makes me sad and a little sick to my stomach to even think about hurting her. I mean, what you said is not so different from love, as in caring for the other. Try asking yourself what changed and how, our feelings are not so stable, and very drastically depending on a number of things that often don't involve the question in hand. The point in doing this is to be sure, of what the issue is. Is the problem something about her? About another person, like falling in love with someone else? Or is the issue in the dynamics of the relationship? Or even in yourself? Then, you can either explain everything to her or break up. Maybe you both can overcome this together, maybe it's better to go separate ways. However, doing things that will hurt both of you based only on a perception of your abstract feelings will only cause you to regret rushing an important decision, even if it ends up being the right one. This is great advice. I think I need to take s little bit of time to figure out the answer to this, cause I truly don't know what has changed. Also, the honeymoon phase does often wear off. Love isn't always butterflies in your stomach, and sometimes the calmer variety of love can be even better. That might not apply to your situation, but just saying. It can also be that the honeymoon phase can cover up some differences and make them feel unimportant. You can also not have the conversation in one go. You can start by telling your partner that you have some specific concerns and talk about what they are. Then if you decide that you do want to end the relationship, you can have that conversation without blindsiding the other person. At a certain point, you have to accept some particular negative parts of your partner's personality or move on. My husband is almost 50. We've been married for over 20 years. While he will continue to experience personal growth, there are parts of his personality that are likely to not ever change. The same is true for myself, of course. In a good marriage, it helps to be a little deaf. Ruth Bader Ginsburg And have selective amnesia as well. This helps with storytelling. Whenever my significant other tells me a story she is happy about I just let her tell it for the tenth time. This Either you accept it without grudge, or if it's something, you can't be flexible with, you move on. People who think they can fix things about their partner are doomed to be in a constant state of disappointment. Unrelated but it made me think arguments, it is bad taste to bring up resolved arguments and keep holding it over your partner's head, especially if you've forgiven them. If you're bringing it up, then you aren't over it and haven't forgiven them. My wife and I struggled with this particularly myself. Not that I wanted to hold things over her, but there was a certain pattern I was trying to bring out that was causing me friction. It was ineffective. What worked was validating the current feeling and being objective and not accusatory when I expressed mine. It has taken some time and we are not perfect but we have not argued like we had before in at least two years. It took my husband and I a while to learn how to argue. Learning to trust that we were actually on each other's side even when angry or annoyed. Learning how to voice feelings and issues without making the other person feel attacked and defensive. Also learning not to argue with each other over pointless things when it was just that we were both stressed out over factors external to the relationship. This is a tricky one. My ex-wife used to twist this on me when she repeatedly did the same disrespectful things, and then when I brought it up it was like you only pretended to forgive me so you could hold it over my head. Like, no, I did forgive you, but this is like the fifth time it's happened and I'm pointing out a pattern. Maybe I'm the butthole though lol. It's just as well I am now twice divorced and will probably never seek a later again. Can't get cheated on when you're single. Oh for sure. There are people who gaslight and whatnot. The purpose of validating the feelings and not being accusatory is supposed to be a method to break a possible legitimate pattern by allowing each other to empathize with the other. This is exactly what has destroyed my current relationship. Unrealistic expectations, superficial forgiveness, hyper-focusing on the negativity in general, and passive-aggressive behavior. If you keep bringing up forgiven arguments, then they have not been forgiven. This is very true. 
My husband and I have a saying you knew what you were getting into. When one of us starts, getting annoyed with something that is just a fundamental part of who we are our response is always you knew what you were getting into. Again, we are always trying to grow, but when my husband gets mad that I am not good at cleaning slash housekeeping or I get annoyed that he goes overboard with planning for the future we can remind each other that this is who we always have been. When I told my father-in-law I was going to propose to his daughter, he said. You know what she's like. My parents told my husband that they don't accept returns. I actually overheard this exact conversation at a coffee shop last year. It was horrifying to listen to, but funny as an outsider lol. Yeah. My future father-in-law at one point said, I'm sure you've worked out by now that she can be a real bitch. Don't get me wrong, sometimes she can be beautiful. But sometimes it's just really hard to be around her. Pretty spot on, to be honest. This is very true. My husband and I have a saying you knew what you were getting into. My so and I have a similar phrase that we say, half jokingly, to like criticism. If you didn't want underscore, you wouldn't have gotten a boyfriend slash girlfriend. If you didn't want greasy handprints all over the house, you wouldn't have gotten a boyfriend. If you didn't want hair in your butt crack, you wouldn't have gotten a girlfriend. It's dumb but sometimes I feel like the statement is a grounding reminder of what it's like to live with another human being. I'm still trying to work out whose hair is and whose butt crack and why. Long hair ends up everywhere. My butt crack, my partner's butt crack, sometimes I have to pull a strand out of the dog's butthole too haha. I use that saying too, along with I know who I married. The first time I saw my now husband's bedroom, it scared me so badly that I ghosted him for a year. I'd never seen so much trash and junk on a floor in my life and I nearly missed out on love and happiness because I ran away in terror at the idea of living with someone who could generate and live in that wreckage. But love won out, I married him anyhow, and I have to admit that he does keep surprising me by slowly getting better at tidying up after himself, which is wonderful specifically because I wasn't expecting that to happen. I figured that tidying up after him is just a part of living with him, and that I loved him enough to make that trade-off. I used to pick up after him in the evenings, but one night I went to look around his gaming chair for loose trash and instead found an improvised trash can. When I established to the kids that dirty laundry goes in the laundry basket, husband started making an effort to also get his laundry in the basket, though I still find his socks all over the house. Finding that improvised trash can felt like watching boss Bob Ross paint a happy little tree. Edit, no idea how this got so many upvotes and nobody corrected that typo, but it's fixed now. Eventually love is not being crazy in love all the time. Love is a crock pot, not a deep fryer. I thought this said, love is a crack pipe, which I think is also true. People not realizing this is a huge cause for divorce I believe. After the first year or two, things settle down and become normal. That's okay. A deeper love will form, but it's not going to be the crazy passionate puppy dog love it was at first. Things evolve and change. I want to add, that's not to say that you can't have moments of puppy dog love later. You just have to actively create them. Buy a set of candles and toss some rose petals on a table for dinner with your favorite song. Draw them something cute. Sing them a stupid little song about how you're feeling. Hold hands when you walk into the grocery store. Set up a picnic at a park. Share some wine and watch a good movie. Moments don't have to naturally happen to be wonderful. Sometimes you can just make your own moment to remember forever. Summed it up perfectly but make your own moment really stands out. Well said. Not too long after the start of COVID, I doodled a formal invite and menu to dinner for two for my wife, and made an at-home date of it. We were stuck at home, so we put the kids to bed, and I proceeded to chef my best for her, I couldn't cook before then to save my life, we didn't need a restaurant, and frankly it was better than most any other date we had together based purely on the focus on each other. More than a decade married and we still try to do the little things that stay memorable. My wife and I have had to live long distance for the past few years because of work and people always ask us how we manage. We always tell them basically the same advice. It's really just putting a foot forward and doing anything to feel connected. We will pick a movie or show to watch together through Netflix party, or telly party now, and each order take out or a pizza and have a long distance movie night. Before COVID, we would go to the movie theater the same week, 
watch the same show, and talk about it. All these little things. None had to be huge gestures but the act of including the other person and making them feel part of our daily life is what matters. I read a book on this. Relationships are always dopaminergic at the start, that's to say it feels like a drug whenever you see or think about your partner. That high inevitably fades for every couple and the long-term relationships survive on much more mellow H and M molecules in your brain which is more of a loving for your partner being there for you. So. Forever 21 molecules are replaced by H and M molecules, which are later replaced by Lane Bryant molecules. Who are you so wise in the ways of science? A king must know these things. All torrid molecules over here. As I like to describe it, the excitement of a roaring bonfire at the beginning is replaced by the comforting warmth of a gentle burning hearth that you can go home to every day. I've heard this before. But it's been 13 years and I'm still crazy in love with her all the time, so I'm not sure when this eventually will come. My fiancé and I have been together close to 5 years now and I still feel this way lol. We always joke that the honeymoon phase never ended for us, and I hope it never does. But that's not to say that our love for each other hasn't matured and grown and gotten deeper. I 100% appreciate him more as a human than I did 5 years ago, but I still get so giddy thinking about him coming home from work lol. 22 years this month, but exactly the same. He texts me from work, says he misses my face. Texts me when he's leaving work, says he's speeding back to his lady. So many more things. Our love is amazing and I'm incredibly glad to have found him. Hold on to that man, I was with a chick for 9 years I wasn't in love with. My fiancé on the other hand, I want that sort of crazy love forever and will 100% work for it. Losing your identity within a relationship is easy to do. Finding it again isn't. Remember to keep your friends and hobbies. After my last relationship ended, I felt guilty for not hurting. I was kind of happy, back in my garage, working on cars with my friends, took a few road trips, my phone was quiet. Crap was cool. Yes. I didn't even realize it but I used to paint a lot. During my 7-year relationship, I didn't create a single thing and in the 6 months since it ended, I've completed 10 pieces. Keeping your friends and hobbies is also good for the health of the relationship, not just in case it fails. It puts less pressure on the relationship to entertain and keep you happy, gives you space, a broader focus and interesting things to talk about. It also helps you be you, who is the person your partner fell for in the first place. I just got dumped by my ex. I couldn't do anything I liked. I couldn't watch the newest Pixar or Disney movie, play video games or even watch sports. We had to do what she wanted and it got to a point where I was always upset and direct with her and she would never care enough. I also wasn't allowed to talk to my female best friend because we are both nerdy and discuss nerdy things. It bothered my ex to death that I never talked about nerd passions to her but any time I tried she told me that she didn't care. If it wasn't about her or something, we shared in common then she never made an effort to talk to me about it. Edit, wow. Thanks for the awards, the upvotes people, and responses. I didn't expect this to gain that traction. I also encourage anybody to seek a therapist in relationships. It's really been helping after the breakup. You could do everything right and still lose. God this is hard to hear. My ex left me and reading this after giving it my all for two years and having left nothing for myself hurts like hell. Dude, you got you left. In a good relationship, the other person adds to your happiness, doesn't become it. So while your ex is no longer in your life, you still got good old awesome you. Also, after leaving those relationships and experiencing better ones, the better ones don't require you to give it your all. They require you to be yourself and yourself naturally wants to be your best for them. You got those to look forward to, which is nice. Sounds like you have quite a lot left for yourself. Probably the best phrasing of this I've seen yet. Well said. It sure is hard to go from a really crafty relationship where you're forced to rely on someone, to a relationship where you can actually be yourself, and where they actually slash want slash you to be yourself, too. I don't think I ever truly knew who I was until I found my wife and she made me realize she actually wanted to get to know me. That is not a weakness. That's life. 
Picard Riker 2024 Wait, that was a Star Trek line? Yup. Picard said it in TNG. Just because you love, someone doesn't mean you should be with him or her. A relationship needs more than love. A person I know really needs to hear this. They insisted too much on being in something with me when I told them that it wasn't going to work, we wanted opposite types of relationships, that in the end it all ended pretty bad. Some people just think that love is going to make things magically work, without even considering that sometimes people that love each other are just incompatible to be together. Thank you Hollywood for programming us for decades to think a person you feel love for is automatically the best person to be with despite literally everything else. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.